Welcome to An Apple a Day, a podcast, a resource, a community. Share your experiences and learn from others as we overcome barriers and learn to live a happy, healthy life with a disability. Welcome to the community. Here's your host, Jimmy Apple. Welcome to another episode of An Apple a Day. I'm your host, Jimmy Apple. How you feeling today, my friends? You feeling good? You feeling strong? You feeling better than you did yesterday? Excellent. You can't ask for better than that. Hey, I want to remind you, an apple a day is brought to you by www.famousapple.com. Famousapple.com is the home site for this podcast. You get a minute? Check it out. While you're tripping around the web, make sure you stop by www.famousapple.com. FamousApple.com forward slash group. That's our group page on Facebook. And people are over there making friends, asking questions, answering questions. So if you get a minute, check it out. That's Living with a Disability on Facebook. That's www.FamousApple.com forward slash group. Hey, we have got a good one for you today. We have a guest. Her name is Catherine Clematis. You want to talk about a powerhouse. This is a powder keg wrapped in a two foot seven inch body. This woman is powerful and she lets nothing and I mean nothing stop her. I want you to sit back for a second and Listen to what Lisa has to say about Catherine Clematis. Let me tell you a bit about Catherine. Growing up with brittle bone disease, her life was always a little different from those of her able-bodied friends. Her parents always made sure she was enrolled in a mainstream school, and although they made her life as normal as possible, there were inevitably activities that her friends took part in that she couldn't. Her mother gave her her first watercolor set to combat some of her boredom, and as they say, the rest is history. She graduated from Loyola University New Orleans with a BA in graphic design in 2011, and shortly thereafter began her own art and design business that she runs from home. She has published two books and has her work exhibited in many public entities, including the West Baton Rouge Museum of Art. She's also a public speaker, focusing on motivational topics based on her own experiences, as well as inclusion in the education system and medical issues. She not only enjoys sharing her story with others, but she also hopes that it gives her listeners a new perspective and brings value to their lives. And now, back to Jimmy. I don't want to give away too much. You're going to hear it in this interview. But her art is so lifelike. She paints, pic- uh, she paints pictures of pets and animals. And when I tell you it's so lifelike, there was pictures of dogs. And when I went on her website and I looked at these dogs, I almost felt like I had to feed them. That's how lifelike they are. And when you hear how quick she can paint these pictures, it's unbelievable. What would take me, if I was able to do this, and if, that's a very big word in this case, if I was able to paint the pictures like she can, It would probably take me a year. When you hear how quick she can paint these pictures, you are going to be amazed, startled. You're going to be blown away by it. And that's the only way I can explain this. She is unbelievable. I'm in awe of this woman. I'm in awe of her talents. Unbelievable. But I want you to sit back, relax, And you're going to really enjoy this because not only is she a talented person, she's a warm person, a very easy person to speak to. Even reading her website, it's like sitting down and talking with her. She's not talking at you in her website or in her book. It's like she's talking to you through her writing. She's just an incredible person. I think you're really going to enjoy this interview. And you're going to enjoy reading her website. Now, her website and all her other information is is in the show notes for this episode. So, sit back, relax, and let me introduce you to Catherine Clematis. (music) 
I'd like to welcome to the podcast Catherine Clematis. How you doing today, Catherine? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. So you have some story. I don't even know where to start. The only thing I can say right off the bat, you are by far the best artist I have ever come across. You, uh. <laughs> you have pictures of dogs that are so lifelike, I, I felt like I had to feed them <laughs> when, I, when I went well, on your you. website. I, I, I was looking for bones to feed them. You are ah. you are excellent. Any, well, thank you very much. Anybody that wants to see such lifelike paintings of animals has to go to Catherine's website. And her website is going to be in the show notes for this podcast. It, it's unbelievable. Before I get into her whole story, I'm so impressed by her artwork. I, I just can't I just can't say enough. You should have been a tattoo artist. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. I I have a real aversion to needles. So, so do probably I. not. So do <laughs> I so do I, but I've got like fifteen tattoos. Oh, no thank you. <laughs> I hated needles, I have to tell you that. When I was younger, I hated needles. And when I got married, you had a you had to have a blood test done. And mm. they took two vials of blood. I had to go out for air in between vials. Ooh, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> but I still have 15 tattoos. Ah. <laughs> well, you're better than I am. Well, <laughs> you know, everyone says, how, how, could you hate ta how could you hate needles and have tattoos? It's because when I went the first time to get a tattoo, it, I went to a shop that was owned by the Hells Angels. And oh. I went with a group of friends, and you can't cry in front of the Hells Angels. No, you cannot. <laughs> you have you to, definitely cannot. <laughs> you have to act like you're tough. That's it. And they have a sign up in a tattoo shop that says, Warning, tattooing is habit forming. And it's <laughs> it's so true. The first tattoo That's I so got funny. was a little, little, little heart that said, Mom. And then, then I went back and I got all the rest of them. But anyway, that's funny. That's something. But anyway, you should have been a tattoo artist. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to feel the needles; just everybody else does. True, that is true. But anyway, Catherine, tell us your story. Now I know from reading your your biography, you have a disease called osteogenesis imperfecto. Or imperfect. Yep, that's correct. Yep. Or otherwise known as brittle bone disease. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that before we start. What is okay? What about, what exactly is that? Sure. So um, it's OI for short because osteogenesis imperfecta is a mouthful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. So oh, OI is basically a genetic bone disease that causes. It's a genetic mutation that causes your collagen to not form correctly or for you not to make enough of it. And collagen is the material that makes up your bones and your ligaments and your muscles, your hair, your nails. So it's important. You know, it's important material in your body. And so when you don't have enough of it or, or it's mutated, uh, what happens is your bones are brittle or, you know, your skin tears easily or there's a lot of other issues, but the main one is that um, my bones break easily and they don't grow correctly. So I um, am only two foot seven, and I use an electric wheelchair for mobility. I have an aide with me almost all the time uh, because I need help doing you know my daily tasks like getting food and going to the bathroom and bathing and that kind of thing. And I actually have. So there's a lot of variety in the severity of this disease, and I actually have one of the most severe types. So there are people with OI that uh, look relatively, I mean, basically normal. They can walk. They only have a few broken bones in their whole life. They may have some other symptoms like hearing loss, or a lot of times the whites of our eyes are kind of blue. That's, that's one of the 
one of the characteristics. And they may have that, but otherwise they're relatively unaffected. Uh, but then there's the other end of the spectrum, which is my end, where we stopped counting my broken bones at 500 when I was 10. Oh, wait, 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 so, wait a minute. Did you say, <laughs> you said 500? Mm-hmm. When, yeah, when I was 10. When you were 10? Mm-hmm. How did you, yeah. how did you break bones 500 times? <laughs> it didn't take much, you know, and it, I can break a rib if I sneeze in the wrong position. You know, it it used to be much worse when I was younger because what happens is when you hit puberty, your body gets, a, you know, your hormones change. And it helps ease the break pattern a little bit. So, I mean, I still break. I still, you know, I still like if I was to get hit by something or I catch my leg wrong or, or I sneeze in the wrong position sometimes still, I break. But it's not like an every week occurrence anymore. Which Wait, is really nice. But uh, <laughs> I, I, w- I would guess when you say you break your bones, like does it does it hurt? Oh yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. I mean, it I, hurts. I know that's a stupid oh, yeah. question, but I mean. I know it's one I get a lot. No, it definitely hurts. I mean, there's nothing wrong with my nerve endings. But the interesting thing is, though, that when I break something, so okay, so you know how when you get an X-ray and you look at your X-ray and your bones are white. Right, right, on my x-ray. Right. Okay. The reason your bones are white on an x-ray is because they're full of calcium, and calcium shows up white on an x-ray. Well, my bones don't look white. They look gray because they're not full of calcium because collagen is what processes that calcium, and because I don't have the correct collagen, I can't hold the calcium. So, so what it means is there's less bone there to heal than it would be for like you to heal a broken bone. So, like, if I break a rib, I can heal a rib in a week. That's kind of a minor broken bone. But, like, if I, like, and even, like, if I break a long bone, a major bone, like my leg, usually I can heal my leg in a few weeks, maybe three, depending on how bad the break is. So, it's kind of a trade-off. You know, I break a lot, but I also heal a lot faster than most people. Wow. Yeah. So, you have, like, this superhuman power. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know if I call it that. But <laughs> you can heal. You can heal a broken leg in two or three weeks. Usually, it, again, I mean, it depends on how bad the break is and where it is, and um, and that kind of thing. But yeah, two or two or three weeks. I mean, I I broke my knee last year really badly, and that that took much longer. So that was a. What a it? It's really. Really hard to heal a, a joint because it's really hard to stabilize a joint so that it can heal. So, what did that take three um, and a half weeks? No, no, <laughs> that was a couple of months. That was that was almost two months. That was pretty bad. Um, but but that's not normal. I mean, that's not a normal break for me. Um, oh. That was definitely an anomaly. Holy smokes! <laughs> My God. <laughs> that, that 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 blows that blows me away. Forget about it. <laughs> that, like I said, that's like a superhuman power that you could. Yeah, it's helpful. Yeah, it, it's helpful. Oh, what, <laughs> I could see it now, Catherine. What happened? Oh, I broke my wrist. You gonna be all right? Yeah, it'll be okay in a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, that's usually what I say. Uh, that's usually about right. Like I broke my foot. I don't know, maybe a month ago, and it, it took a week. I don't know, a week and a half. Oh. It was broken in a couple spots, so it took a little bit. And what happens, like, if you, God forbid, you had to have it amputated, would it regenerate? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think that's the way it works. Oh, okay. I'm just curious. No. Nope. But now, na- na- naturally, you, 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 you were born with this. Does anyone else in your mm-hmm. family or, like, distant family have this? Was this? Not that I'm aware of. So you can get OI two different ways. And one is that it is passed down in your family. Right. And the other way is just random luck. It's just a random genetic mutation. And there is one person on my dad's side of the family that possibly maybe had it, but she worked in a coal mine and she died really early. 
And if he did have it, it wasn't nearly as severe as the type I have. So it, do, it still doesn't really make sense. Like, normally, when you pass it down, it, you pass down the same type. And this, we would have had two different types. So as far as we know, I'm a, just a random genetic mutation. Now, yep. can, uh, I also read on your bio, you're two foot seven tall? Yep. Really? Or short, depending on how you look at it. I look at, yeah. it, as, I look at it as tall. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yep, I'm two foot seven um, on my long side, actually, because my short side is about a half inch shorter than that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah, and I use an electric wheelchair to get around. And like I said, I have an aid with me a lot. So, yeah. Can can I ask you a, now? You can tell me to shut up anytime you want. But how do you how do you buy clothes? <laughs> that is, um, yeah. So that's difficult sometimes. Um, so most clothing that fits me is you know is kids sizes. Well, yeah. And kids kids sizes are not always age appropriate for me. Right. Uh, which is that's... very frustrating. That's what that's what yeah. I that's what I was wondering. Now Yeah, so it, it I mean I can find things in kids' sizes that work. Um, but I, I mean I have a really good cream shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. You know, I mean I will buy a small size adult clothes and just have her alter them. The, yeah. Right. Well, uh, the, you know. The only reason I ask is that I, I have a, a a friend, someone that I met through 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 doing the podcasting that uh, she, she, uh, she has cerebral palsy and mm -hmm. she, she, she also models adaptive clothing for people. Oh, fun. Yeah. And, um, they, they make special clothing for people with, you know, uh, physical, physical problems. And that's yeah. why I was curious if they, if there was someone that makes clothing, you know, like a company that makes clothing for people with the, like with your height because um, I, i'm sure there are I, i'm sure like, there are i was looking at your pictures in on your website and it doesn't look like you're wearing child child <laughs> clothing you know what i mean mm -hmm. it, i because i i'm looking at your picture and i was i was confused because it says two foot seven in the bio and you don't look two foot seven in the pictures Oh well, that's good to know. Nah, yeah, no, it doesn't. If I didn't, <laughs> if I didn't read that, I would, I wouldn't think that. Well, that's good to know. No. It, it... Um. Yeah, I just like I said, I just I try to buy. You know, when I go to, I, I hate. I used to love buying clothes. I hate buying clothes now because usually I'm going to the mall or shopping or whatever, mm -hmm. and I try on things and I say, okay, can I make this work? You know, like it's not like a oh, this fits and looks right. It's usually a, okay, how much is it going to cost me? Right. Or how hard is it going to be to make this work? And do I like it enough to not only buy it, but also pay to have it tailored? Right. You know, so it's, it can be frustrating. But, you... um, but on the plus side, I work from home, so I often don't have to get out of my pajamas to work. <laughs> there, um, <laughs> there, there you so, go. You know, it's okay if my wardrobe is a little more limited right now. Uh, but yeah, but, it's, it's okay. But see now, I would have a great time going into a in, going into a kid's shop and <laughs> just buying anything. Like yeah, I, I, I don't know. But then no, and, and I, puppies and kitties and pre are just nah, not really my style. No, I would I wouldn't you do know? that. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, but I look at some of the things. It's like I don't know. You remember when you were a kid? The toys that we had as kids weren't as cool as the toys kids have today. Oh, by no means are they as cool. No. Not, not even a, close. Not even, right, exactly. So, like, even the clothes, though, that the kids have today, they have, like, little leather jackets and stuff. When I was a kid, I, know. I had a corduroy jacket. It was no... I gotta tell you, though, thank God they have that. Because, I mean, that's, you know, that works for me. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm you saying. <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm saying. I wouldn't mind having the clothes, the, some of the clothes that the kids have today. Mm -hmm. You know, muscle tees and stuff like that. I had, yep. I had, like I said, I had a corduroy jacket, corduroy pants that whistled. The, yeah. the, these kids have have Levi's and leather oh, jackets. Uh, but you know, see, 
but listen to you talk. He, you, you're going through, forget the medical problems for a minute. Look at all the other struggles you're going through, and you have such a great attitude. You, <laughs> you, you honestly do. Even reading your website, you have such a great attitude, and it comes through in your writing. Yeah, well, thank you. It does. It, it, I love talking to people, t t talking to people like you, and that's what this whole podcast is about: is being positive. I, I myself have disabilities. You have disability. You have disabilities, and you have a positive attitude. Now, I, I, I told you I had that one quote from you, and I have to read it. It says, "Okay, we're all presented with opportunities for happiness in our, in life, but unless." Unless we make an effort to pursue those opportunities, we'll never know what it means to be happy. And that I, I was I was touched by that. That's that's such a great point. You know, some people like you take you for instance, just you. You could turn around, sit back, and say, "Poor me, I got dealt this rotten card, and I'm not going to do anything." But instead, you went to mainstream schools. Your, your parents didn't let you sit back on your butt and you know feel bad um, no. for yourself. You no. didn't. You didn't let yourself sit back, right? You went to mainstream schools. I'm sure, like I'm sure you had a good time going to school, but I'm sure you faced some adversity in school, right? Oh yeah. You know, oh yeah, but I was one of those weird kids that loved school too. Right. So. But you, yeah. always, you always got the jackass in school that has to be, you know, that has to be a class oh, A yeah. jackass. Oh, yeah, of course. So it makes it a little bit hard. But you went on to, you, you went to a school, you went to high school, you went to college. You, you mastered art. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about that. You mastered art. You run your own business now, right? I do. You, yep. Now, you've written two books. I, well, I uh, illustrated one and wrote one. All right, the one you wrote so, yeah. is, what is it, Looking Up? Yes, yes. Tell us about so, that. Sure. So Looking Up is, uh, actually, Looking Up started as my college senior thesis. So uh, I majored in graphic design at Royal University in New Orleans. And uh, for our final project, we were told, I mean, we were given almost no guidelines. We were basically told to come up with a project that only we could do. I mean, that was quite literally, that was the guideline. And we had to, you know, this was given to us at the beginning of the year and at the end of the second semester, we had to present that project in a, in a class show, basically, for the school and for the public and, you know, whoever showed up. So I, uh, I chose to do a book because I'm one of those people who... I like to work for the goal and have a tangible item at the end of the goal. So instead of doing like a website or something digital, I, I like to have something you can actually hold. So I chose to do a book and I chose to write a book from my perspective. And it talks about what we've already talked about today. It talks about a lie. It talks about having a positive attitude. It talks about things people had said to me in public, you know, how, how strangers see me and, and how a lot of times that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it talks about, you know, different issues I've had as far as like accidents and, and broken bones and, you know, my family life and that kind of thing. Uh, obviously the, the effect having animals around me all my life has had on me. That kind of thing. So, um, yeah, so that is a coffee table book. It's got lots of photos. I did all the photography in it. Um, and, of course, I did a layout because, you know, it was for a design project. And my um, after, after I graduated, a local publisher picked it up and published it. So wow. it, it is a published book, yeah. So that was published in 2011. Very good. Excellent. And the second book that you now you that's a that's a collaboration with a, a name. yeah the second book is a collaboration yeah so the second book is called Breed All About Us and <laughs> it's a collaboration yeah it's a collaboration with my neighbor Yvonne Cummins um, she is a writer and um, actually her degree is in law but she's an excellent writer and an excellent creative writer 
And we decided, so <laughs> Wait it kind of happened organically. You um, said, I, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. You said she had degrees in law? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that makes her a creative writer right off the bat. Yeah, it does. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, but anyway, but she, I, I, I sell a lot of my paintings on products. So one of the things I do um, in my business is I paint something and then I put it on mugs or I put it on towels or blankets or pillows and then I sell those products. Mm-hmm. Well, I I started getting requests for dogs on products and I didn't up until right before this book was published I didn't have any dogs on products because. Most of the dogs I painted were people's pets, you know. So like, it wasn't something I would, you know, it wasn't just a random dog. It was somebody's pet, so it wasn't something I would sell on a product. So I said, well, okay, I'll just go ahead and do a few paintings of the most common dog breeds, the ones I get asked for all the time, and then you know I'll put those on products and sell them. <laughs> well, a few <laughs> turned into sixty-four. Wow. Very quickly. Wow. Yeah, and um, and it was hard to stop at sixty four. It was it was really hard to narrow it down at the end. And kind of halfway through, I had a friend come over one day, and you know I, I probably had about thirty of them done. And she said, you know, you really should make this into a book. I'm like, hmm, that's not a bad idea. And so I got with my neighbor, um, and she said, oh well, I would love to write it because at that point. I didn't want to write a book. Like, I, I wrote my looking up book. Writing is not, I mean, I'm, I can do it, but it's not something I love to do. Uh, so I knew that if I made this into a book, I wanted somebody to collaborate. And so Yvonne was totally into it, and um, I started these paintings in April, and by September, we had a book laid out. Wow. So wow. it was very quick. Um, yeah, it was very quick. It was published. I think it was officially published at the end of September of 2019, I, I believe. Um, and yeah, so it was great. Unfortunately, it was published right before COVID started. And so we were doing great. You know, we were doing a lot of book signings and we had a lot of momentum. But then once COVID hit, you know, it kind of slacked off. So we're starting back with that again. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a really fun little project. Well, you do everything quick. You heal quick. You write books quick. <laughs> you get published well, quick. I get really bored really quickly. I guess. And, Everything's quick with then, you. <laughs> well, and I'm also one of those people that I don't like to leave things undone. I definitely get that from my dad. So um, I like to finish projects. Wow. It drives me crazy if I have more than a couple of paintings started at one time. Like I, I have to finish them. With, I'm with, not one of those people that can do that. But that the fact that you can do 64 paintings and the quality of paintings that you do, and to do 64 of them in such a short time, what do you not sleep? <laughs> <laughs> I did not a lot. Um, no, it averaged out to one every other day, I believe. And they're small. I mean, they're four by six. They're a little bit blown up in the book because um, I can't have them in. You know, they're a high-resolution stand, so I could blow them up just a little bit in the book. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it averaged out to one every other day. So oh, my was, God. It was intense. Like, that's all I did for those four months or five months, pretty much. I, yeah. <laughs> I, anybody that's listening to this right now, go to her website, look at the pictures of the dogs, Go to look at those pet pictures, and tell me... If you think she could do one of those every other day, I could probably <laughs> do one of those every other seven months, and they wouldn't even look <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, actually, this year has been really great as far as pet portraits go. I believe, what am I up to? I believe I'm up to 34 for the year. It's either 30, 30, no, it's 30, 34 for the year. What are you, slacking No, off? it might be 35. It's either thirty four or thirty five for the year so far. This is um, this is July. Yeah. This is July. What are you slacking off? <laughs> <laughs> I know. 
I know. Well, <laughs> so the ones for the book, like I said, those are small and they don't have backgrounds um, because they're meant to be like a snapshot of the breed. Right. So they don't have any kind of, you know, personalized background. But when I do a pet portrait, they're much more involved. And they're, they're also, you know, when you do a pet portrait, it has to look like that particular animal. So it's a little more, it has to have to pay a little more attention just because, you know, it has to look just like that animal. Otherwise, well, nobody wants it. <laughs> so, you know? So what do those take? Two days? Three, maybe? <laughs> it depends on the size. Uh, the five by sevens usually are between two and three days. My but the, God. The I w- nine by... <laughs> I was ki- I was kidding. <laughs> I was kidding. No, no, that's about right. And the bigger ones are um, they they can be five to six days. It just depends. Well, that's because you have to run out and get more paint. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but, well, and it's just a, you know it's a bigger area to cover, and it, it just it takes longer. But and physically, it's a little more difficult for me too. So. Oh my God. But, yeah. Five to six days. It would take me five to six months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's very, very rare that I go over a week. Um, the only time that happens is if somebody asks me to do more than one animal in a painting. And that, you know, obviously, that takes longer. Now, do you do human pictures, too? No, I do not. I am so bad at it. And quite honestly, I don't enjoy it. And that's probably part of the reason I'm so bad at it. Um, I, I'm not. And no. I don't have any intention of starting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't know. All I can say is what, what you do with the, with the pet pictures is unbelievable. And now, I also want to let people know that you also work with animal causes. And mm-hmm. you've also donated uh to animal causes, donated pictures for auctions. Yep, yep. Usually, what we do is um, the the rescue or the or the cause the organization will have some kind of event, uh, whether it's online or in person, and I will give them raffle tickets to sell uh, for a free pet portrait. So the winner will, you know, obviously will win a free pet portrait from me. And usually, we do the raffle tickets are like five dollars. And I give them, you know, 50 or 100 or whatever. And they sell them. And they almost, I mean, I don't think I've ever done one where they've not sold out. So they always sell out. And they make all that money. And then somebody gets a free bed it in the end. So, the win-win. I'm sure they're making money. I'm sure. Yeah, I also. And, and, you know, I can't. It's not something I can do constantly. You know, it's not something I can do all the time just because. I don't have the time and with my regular work. And you do you have know? to you do have to eat. <laughs> right, right. Um, but it's something I like to do a few times a year, for sure. Well, I think you know, there's a few local organizations I like to work with. And so. I think I think it's great. I I I think it. I think anyone that helps out animals has a special place. Yeah. There's a there's a special place there. Now, Definitely. I want to I want to ask you that. Uh, getting back to your situation and dealing with your everyday life you know so many people they have they have a problem like how do you stay so positive how do you i mean i can i can appreciate how positive you are but how would you explain to someone how they can be how they can remain positive what would you what would you say your secret is if if you had one oh goodness i don't know if i have one um, I, well, you know, growing up, my, my mom especially would never let me feel sorry for myself, at least not for very long, no matter what was broken or what hurt or, you know, what was going on. And so I think that has had a major impact, you know, obviously on my life. And, and it's something that I've, you know, continued as, you know, as I've grown into an adult. Uh, so that, that general attitude, you know, my mom, I, people say, well, how did you go to school with broken bones? I, you know, my mom made it so that I, going to school and getting good grades was a good thing, you know, and she made it so that I wanted to do that. And 
So, like, when I was too broken to go to school, I would beg my mom to let me go. And she wouldn't let me go. Because, you know, I had too much pain or whatever. And, you know, whereas a lot of kids would say, would fake being sick. You know, and fake, got you know, and they didn't want to go to school. And I was the complete opposite. And I'm lucky because, also, I have turned something that, in general, I say not every day, but in general... I love to do into a career. So that helps a lot too. You know, it, it helps when you're doing something you mostly love to do. I mean, I say that mostly because, you know, of course there are days where painting gets very frustrating and, you know, work gets frustrating and I just, I'm at a block and I just can't get past it. Like I had one of those days yesterday, but anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, but, and, and they're, they're not often. Like it doesn't happen often. But it does happen. Um, also, I think I do try to make time because I, I do a lot of pet portraits and I do a lot of commissioned work. And so I try to make time to paint for myself also where I'm picking the subject matter and mm-hmm. I'm picking the photo that I'm working from um, just because I want to. Just right. because that's what I want to do. Um, and then the other thing is that I think it's important to have some kind of outlet or some kind of hobby outside that's completely outside of work that you do just just for you you know just just to give your brain a break just to be outside the norm for a little while and for me that's live music i love to go to live music events so you know i think all of that combined is definitely how i stay positive cool that's true and just one more thing. I'm going to put you on the spot one more time. Okay. What would you say to someone that has, like, this negative at outlook that's like a woe is me type of person? What would you say to them to perk them up, to maybe try to turn them around? Well, I'm a realist. So um, I, it's probably pretty direct. Um, good, <laughs> like, good. You know, get over it. Um, you know, I mean, I, I think that if you have the ability to contribute something to society, you should, I mean, as as simple as that, you know, because I think that if everyone did that in a positive manner, you know, the world would be a better place, right? Exactly. Because everybody would be moving up to their potential. Um, unfortunately that doesn't happen. (laughs) This is too true. (laughs) Yeah. Too true. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, these people, people that, you know, I look at people who are constantly trying to get around working, you know, and they, and they do all these things, they put all this energy into trying to get around, like, getting a job, you know, and they try to find a way to get money from other people or from the government or whatever, and they put all this energy into that when they could just have a job that they put that energy into or less and still have what they need. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Uh, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but, you know, that's just not the way I was raised. So. Ex- exactly. If you put as much effort in, into into doing something as you do into trying to get away without doing anything. Exactly. You, you'd be and, you know, you never know. You never know what opportunities are going to present themselves. Exactly. You know, I mean, I, I know you said you... Um, You've been looking at my website. I don't know if you saw that I got to work with Rod Stewart a few years ago, mm-hmm. which was completely insane and totally random and was just an opportunity that dropped in my lap, right. literally, you know, and it was amazing. I mean, it was an incredible opportunity, and I still get to keep in touch with him. Do you? Is awesome. Very mm-hmm. good. Yeah. Very yeah. good. It's awesome. Very nice man, by the way. But, um, but, yeah, I mean, you just you never know what's going to happen. I'm not talking about people. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about people that are, you know, truly, truly, truly unable to work. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about people. There's certain people out there that think being on disability and Social Security that is some kind of paid vacation. It's not. Mm-hmm. It's, no, it's, it's meant to... It's meant to supplement what you can't do. Exactly. So, I mean, look, I mean, full disclosure, I get SSDI, but right. that's meant to supplement my AIDS. Right. Because, you know, 
I think it costs me money to hire them. Of course. You know, and, you know, they're helping me do the things that other people normally can do for themselves. Oh, exactly. You know, and, and I mean, of course, it's SSCI. It doesn't even come close to covering the salary. Right. You know, I still have to make a lot of that myself. Um, but, you know, that's what it's there for. Exactly. That's, that's the point. It's not there for you to go, you know, spend on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> on, you know, a not on life essentials, you know? Right. But, you know, some people have this have this idea that this is like a new career, you know, or, or this yeah. is the way that or they look down on people that do receive SSDI and think that you're living off the fat of the land. Well, no, I'm sorry, you're sadly mistaken. You know, if you not believe me, I have paid the government an enormous amount of taxes over the last two years. <laughs> I have put me back in. Trust me. And. <laughs> I am doing my part. <laughs> yeah, and the people that do receive Social Security, they paid into it. You know, it, yeah. it's not like you're, you're. It's not like you're getting exactly. a, a free ride. And right. it's just that the, there's certain people that just give up. And I, I hate to see. And I'm not. I'm not saying this to be mean. I just hate to see people give up. I, I, I do too, and especially with where technology is in today's world. You know, okay, if. You know, for example, I was talking to somebody not long ago who is in a wheelchair and they have transportation problems. Mm -hmm. So they they have made the excuse that they can't work because they can't leave their house. Right. Well, that's not really an excuse anymore. No. How many of us work from home for how long during COVID? Right. I mean, that's not, you can work from home. You can find a way. I mean, I, I, I've talked to people, I've talked to people that truly can't work. That truly can't. I, yeah. I, I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've spoken to many of them. I spoke to others, though, that they could, and they could make more money off of SSDI. I know. They could. They, I know. But for, and see, that's a broken system. That's a problem. I don't know why they want to be on it. And you know what it is, though? I think they get scared, to be mm -hmm. honest. I think they get, mm -hmm. they get scared because, like, this is... This is money coming in, and now I have to step yeah. off the ledge, and yeah. what happens? Yeah. Those are the same people, though, that work at a job, and they'll stay at the same job their whole life and never look to get yeah. ahead. You know, so, yeah. But, you know, it, but I, just, I just hate to see people that they become disabled, right? And they get that, they get that, that, uh, the scarlet letter, they're disabled. Now they feel like they're chained to their bed for the rest of their life. You're not. You're no. Not, you're, you're not a prisoner in your own house. If you're, you get that, you get that designation that you're disabled. Doesn't mean you're chained to your house. You're not a prisoner in your house. No, you just have to make it work differently. Right. You, it's a, it, now your life has changed. Right. So maybe before you rode a motorcycle and you, you drove airplanes. <laughs> now you can't ride a motorcycle and drive airplanes. So now you have to ride a bus and be a right. passenger in an airplane. Your life changed, but it doesn't mean your right. life ended. And exactly. that's, that's what I'm trying to get across. You can still be happy and be healthy and be disabled. Oh, definitely. I mean, you know, I break bones. But I'm a relatively healthy person. Right, exactly. That's what that's you know that's what I'm yeah. getting at here. You yeah. <laughs> you can break bones. You're 500 by the time you're 10. I still can't get over that. <laughs> <laughs> but you're a healthy person and you're a happy person. Yeah. I mean, most days. Yeah, most days. Overall. Yeah. Overall. <laughs> Overall. <laughs> on those Overall. days, on those days that you're not sneezing the wrong way. But yeah, right. But you're a happy person. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. and you have some really big issues, but you're still a happy person. And that's what I'm trying to get through to some people. Like people are afraid. And I'm not saying that that it's it's bad. it's just that they're afraid. They're afraid to be happy. Once they become once they have a disability for some reason, they're afraid to be happy. And it's 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 what I call the woe is me syndrome. Mm -hmm. 
and it gets deeper and deeper. And you're a perfect example. You're someone, if anyone could have it, you could have it. You could sit back in a chair, in a room, with the lights off and go, woe is me. Because, Mm -hmm. hell, if the wind blows the wrong way, you could break a bone. (laughs) If the cat walks by you too fast, you could break a bone. True. That actually happened. Well, I'm but sure. Yeah. I'm sure it yeah. has. <laughs> but instead, <laughs> instead, you're in the middle of the house writing books, painting pictures. You snap a bone; it's better in three days. You, you keep painting pictures. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, and you know, usually when I break a bone, yeah, it hurts, and you know, I'm dealing with pain and all that. But but the the more frustrating part is that I can't do the things I want to do. Right. You know, it's not so much like, cause, you know, I've been I've been dealing with physical pain for a really long time, you know, my entire life. So, I mean, yeah, it hurts, and, you know, sometimes it's really bad. Sometimes, you know, it's just annoying. But it's more, for me, most of the time, it's more about, like, oh, boy, I just broke something. Now I can't go do blah, 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 like I planned. <laughs> what an inconvenience. You know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's usually that's usually the more annoying part for me. You, you are know? you are nuts. <laughs> you know. Know. You are nuts. Now, that's not saying there are some times where the pain is really bad and you no, know, I mean, I'm, I'm, that is, you know that, but but on a normal basis, like it's usually more about you know I can't work, I can't get in the position of pain, I can't, you know what I mean, whatever it is. And it's, and it's frustrating. No, I don't. Um, but, but yeah, anyway. But, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a new fan. I, I'm definitely a new fan of yours. Good. You're on, but you're like, you're like Wonder Woman, Superwoman, and, and Batwoman all wrapped up into one. <laughs> you break bones, huh? No big deal. No big deal. Give me the bat rope. I'll climb up with one hand. (laughs) Oh man! But I want to. I want to. I want to remind everybody: you have to check out her books. This looking up the story of her life. I just read a small piece about her life, and I'm I'm buying the book because I want to read more. Looking up, I want to read more about her because. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm just enthralled by all of this. And her story is so, if she wrote it, reading what she wrote on the site that I met her on and reading what she wrote on her website, it's like having a conversation. It's not reading a boring, like uh, a clinical site. It's like having a conversation with her. When you read her website, it's like having a conversation with a person. It's not, it's not like, I don't know, you go to some of these websites and it's like boring. Like you know, like that Southern hospitality. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess that's true because it's someone else that I, that I spoke to just recently. Actually, her episode is coming out tomorrow, Wendy Wallace. And she, she's another one. She writes, and it's just like you're talking to her. It's there, there's it's like she's talking to you right through the website, and it's amazing. And you write her, you and her could be sisters. The way that you write, it's like I'm talking to you on your website, or you're talking to me. Like you're not talking to anyone else. You're talking to me when I read your website. And, well, that's the goal. Well, that that's how it comes across. And that's what I, I, I'm figuring. That's the way the books have got, have got to come across as well. So you have well, to. Well, I hope so. <laughs> I hope. I'm, I'm sure they do because you're now honest. You know, for for transparency reasons, this is the first time that you and I have talked yep. today, and yep. I feel like I've known you for months. <laughs> to be honest with you, I feel like I, I feel like. We've talked before, and we never have. This today's the first day, and here I am calling you crazy. You know, I I, I don't know you, but that's all right. A lot of people do. Yeah, you know, all good. What they all call you crazy? Well, some do. <laughs> okay. 
But no, I've had to, I felt very relaxed talking to you. I hope you felt relaxed talking. And I'm telling you, it, I'm sure it, if it came across in your website and on the match site that we met that you know that uh, we met on there, it came across on that also when I read your bio. I'm sure it comes across in the book the same way. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tell everyone you have to get her book. Looking up. And you have to get the other book where she collaborated with her neighbor, Breed About Us. Breed. Get it? The dog. Breed. Mm -hmm. B-R-E-E-D. About Us. Now, I'm going to have links in the show notes where you can check out these books. I'm sure they're on Amazon. Everything is on Amazon. They are. They Uh, are, but if you order them through my website, I can find them. Okay. That's even um, better. Yeah, most people prefer to do that. I'll have I'll have the links to to Catherine's website where you can get the books and you get them autographed. Cool. There you go. And I'll have the links to her well her website and any other links that we talked about in the in the podcast today we'll have there. And is there a way that people can get in touch with you just to ask questions if they if they wanted to? Yeah, I have a contact page on my website. Um, you're welcome to. And, and are they, you, you also have a newsletter on your website, too. I do have a newsletter sign up. You can sign up for my newsletter. And then also, I'm on Instagram and Facebook, so you can find me there you can. as well. And I usually, I post a lot of, um, especially on Instagram, a lot of what I'm doing on a day-to-day basis. So a lot of people like to follow that. So yeah, that's a good, that's a good option. Very cool. Oh, I have all those links, Facebook, Instagram, and you on Twitter, too? Uh, not really. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, I believe I have an account, but I have not posted to Twitter in a very long time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no. Let's just go with no okay. for that. <laughs> <laughs> I am on LinkedIn, though. Okay. So if you want to connect on LinkedIn, you can connect on LinkedIn. Cool. I have all the accounts <laughs> listed at the in the show notes here for this episode. And contact us. She's a, she's a very nice person. And buy her books. Definitely buy her books. Well, Catherine, it's been very nice talking to you today. I really had a good you time. Well. And I hope to talk to you again. Yes, that would be great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. Okay. All right. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you again. Yes, right. sounds great. I want to thank our guest, Catherine Clomitis, for joining us today. She has a powerful story, and I urge everyone to go to her website, check out her story for yourself, and check out her books. She is unbelievable. She is such a talented person. So, again, thank you, Catherine, for being with us today, and thank you, the listening audience, for being with us today. Without you, we're nothing. I want to let you know about our upcoming guest, Spencer Bishens. You do not want to miss this next episode. Let me tell you, if you receive Social Security Disability Benefits, if you're applying for Social Security Disability Benefits, if you know anybody that receives Social Security Disability Benefits. You must listen to this next episode. Without a doubt, you must listen to this next episode. This is probably the most important podcast you will ever need to listen to. Trust me, be here for the next episode of An Apple a Day. There is going to be information that you do not want to miss. It's that important. Again, thank you for being here today. Make sure you're here for the next episode of An Apple a Day. And remember this, my friends. Remember this. No matter what, things can always be worse. That's right. There's somebody somewhere right now wishing that they were in your position. So things can always be worse. Hey, you've been listening to An Apple a Day. My name is Jimmy Apple. 
My friends, have a great one today. I'll talk to you again real soon. Thanks for listening to An Apple a Day with Jimmy Apple, your gateway to a happy, healthy life. Join our community at www.famousapple.com. See you next time.